And uh, if you want, I can give you a little uh, tour of the shop here. So here's our, this is the, the strong land shop. We'll take it up. So here's our foam pit. This is the, the little foam pit and a little rock wall. And you can get up there basically to that little platform and jump out. Uh, a lot of the kids jump out of that little window right there into here. But just to, you know, this is a little foam pit. That little ramp over there is basically like a little roller that they bicycle down and then jump in here. Uh, the big foam pit's out next to the shop. It's about 40 by 60. Uh, this little guy's probably about 12 by 20. Uh, the big one's a lot deeper, you know, for big bikes and stuff. But, you know, we go up here, we got, you know, all the jerseys. Just a few of, you know, some highlight jerseys. Of course, plaques um, from all the years of them racing. A couple of big Nitro Circus checks. Uh, you you can, need one. You can make those out to us. Make Okay. So you got to have a big check bank. Okay. <laughs> The but ATM doesn't the, take those. Yeah, just a couple of trophies. It, so, and these are all first place. Uh, when we went to his dad's shop and got them all out, he said, "If it's not first place, throw it away." He said, "I don't <laughs> want it first. And so, yeah, that's it. That's that. I, I won't go too in depth uh, in this part. This is a little more private. But this is our bar and a little bunk room. So I live in here. I live in a little bottom bunk, and our little kind of little kitchenette and then we got you know the bar area in there of you know tv and big buck hunter machine there's a bathroom and shower in there um these are some special hats nitro circus orange hat there's only two ways you can get one of those you either take a life flight or you do something world's first um i've got two of them uh, <laughs> <laughs> which side of that equation well, one's a life flight and one's a back flipping a four wheeler. Uh, so, <laughs> but yes, yeah, so that's kind of the overview of the shop. You know, every everything you know, he he's got sentimental value. Everything's got a story. This is a uh, Gravity Games bike uh, from years years back. That little uh, car body, that's from his wife Lindsay. She uh, when he was racing NASCAR, they had a. Uh, it's called a bandito. It's kind of like a, a crazy fast go-kart. So they had a, a smaller race called the better half dash of all the NASCAR wives. And Lindsay won that. Uh, there's a check for it over there. I think she won like 10 grand in the golf court and all kind of stuff. Uh, that's his last amateur 125 bike. Um, there's one of the KTMs he rides. That's probably his favorite KTM. That's a 300 electric start. And he's just all about the electric start game now. Is the uh, is the RM that wound up in the San Francisco Bay there? That's in um, the owner. I think it's the owner of Fox Racing. I think it's in his office. Nice. That's a bike. It did a 360. Uh, the first 360 for him. There's a little Nitro Circus bicycle. The first one that was available at Walmart. Uh, the hood off the Nitro Circus monster truck. That's his last uh, RM80 from Amateur Days. And then my two can are my, my Sport with the System 3 tires and then my Maverick uh, System 3. And so the big question, which one do you drive more? Um, honestly, around here, I drive the Sport a little bit more um, because it has the little bed. Um, I put... You know, it, it's pretty simple. It's got the little speakers and stuff. But I put the little tool rack on the back, and I carry a chainsaw. And it's got the little bed, so I can put, like, the gas can and stuff back there and don't worry about it. Because I'm out, like, clearing trees and tree, tree limbs and stuff like that. Um, but if I'm doing, like, a lot of trail riding and adventures, uh, I run the X3. It's a little bit smoother ride, and it's got the spare tire, tire carrier. I'll uh, put the fender pullers on it to keep keep this halfway clean. And then, uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. It's got the audio roof. And so for those that are really keen on the, there's pretty cool light bar, Infinite Offroad. They make a lot of really, really nice stuff at a really good price. That, that light company, they make 
light bars and whips with a 25 year warranty. No questions asked. He'll give you a new one. I'm like, man, that's, that's pretty next level. But, uh, but so this RC is a 64 inch RC. So it comes, you know, 120 horsepower with a black cage. Well, since I have a double R X3 that I built for King of the Hammers, I kept this orange cage off of it and I put it on this one. <laughs> oh, very nice. I kept the full doors off of it and put it on this one. And I kept the adjustable harnesses and put it in this one. So basically just rolling from one machine to another. Um, so it makes it stand out a little bit. It's got the awesome little windshield wiper. I love the old thing. And, and you went with a 64 inch because you guys have the narrower trails and are dealing with trees a lot more than us out in the Northwest. Yeah. Both of these are 64s. And then both of Travis's X3s are 64s also. Uh, I've got this one apart. We're actually, Moving the radiator to the back, uh, Can-Am has a radiator relocate kit to basically move your stock radiator back there. Uh, this one's kind of like a, uh, a loner. So he has his machine that's all like red, white, and blue. And then we have this one that we kind of put anybody in. So to keep the radiator safe, we're going to put it back. Because <laughs> this, one, this one will catch a lot, of, a lot of crap from people that don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I think the last video I saw you letting somebody drive one of the machines, they uh, took a tree out. Yeah, that, that happens from time to time. <laughs> and, uh, of course, our toolbox and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's nothing crazy. Well, I got some um, carbon Kevlar plastics for a Suzuki. Um, Kevlar for quite a few years. And the guy at Kevlar had those plastics made up, so we're going to bolt them on one of his 125s we still have and get some pictures with it. And of course, a big old roll of helmets. Um, if you're rocking one of those helmets right there, you're a bad dude. <laughs> so every shop guy has kind of like that one go-to tool that if it wasn't in the shop, you'd be very upset. What's your one go-to tool? Right, impact gun. <laughs> Half inch or three eight? Three eighths. And then we got our little storage area. This is Travis's two seat X3. Um, they actually did a post about about it uh, a couple months ago. Uh, design his wrap contest. So people basically click the link, get the little um, the little uh, layout, and then you design wrap and send them in. And this is the wrap that won. So pretty cool. And then there's a four seat over there. He runs a four seat more than anything. He puts the kids in it. Um, and then they go out and run around the trails and stuff like that. But yeah, this is uh, this little guy, little three eighths. That'll that'll do anything on a can am minus the axle and the clutch, and that'll do everything you want to do. And then this is my second. I, I notice if these are ever going, that's Loctite. <laughs> You're not going to steal my Loctite. I buy the I buy Loctite by the liter. Um, a liter of Loctite's a hundred bucks or a bottle smaller than this at the, at the store is like 35 bucks. Right. You do the math. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's basically with the strong land shop. Um, we got a couple of CDs outside. I'm putting some step, little step on them. And that's about it right here. Is that the, uh, the little, uh, well, I actually see the area that you guys are doing a little flat track racing on some of the one tens. Oh yeah. So we, we go in that way, go around and you come out right there. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I saw some footage of that. Travis isn't, isn't at all competitive, is he? No, no. But it's basically a little hallway. And we got light, but it's more fun if you leave it dark. <laughs> It reminds me of my my times at the warehouse where we would take the crazy carts through the uh, the warehouse shelving and and try to dodge things that would hang it, hang out of the way, but yeah. uh, looks like a lot of good times there and there's probably a, a memory in each corner of that building. Oh, we we have a big time. Really, no matter what we're doing, we always have a big time. Awesome. Uh, well, uh, any last parting thoughts? Anything you want to plug before you head out? Oh, I, you know, I really just want to thank y'all for. You know, invite me on the show and I'll be part of it. And, uh, you know, thanks to the, the companies that, that help and support us. You know, can am Super ATV, Infinite Off-Road, and System Three Wheel and Tire. Um, you know, if anybody ever needs any of those kind of products, just look into them. They, 
they make there's tons of great products, but just look into those. You know, that's very very simple. But my little X3 back there, that 120 horse, it's a 195 horse now. Um, I talked to Evo and I got a flash from Evo, and then I put the RR intercooler intercooler pipes and the RR fuel pump, and that's all you got to do is those few things, and then reset the wastegate pressure, and you can make it 195. So that little thing's a freaking beast. Yeah. And Travis's machine, uh, Evo sent me a flash for it, really just to unlock it because he was dragging the brake and it was limp loading a lot because he drags the brake into the pace of the jumps just to scrub the speed off, but then he's right back in the gas and it would die on him in the air and it, it scared him. So we flashed it just to unlock it. Yeah, but, Ian's yeah. got the Evo uh, 3R on his and and that's giving it some, some pep up. My hammer's car, like it's flashed. But it's just flashed to unlock it. Uh, it's not more power. I mean, you don't need more than 195 horsepower. I don't think anybody does, uh, especially trail riding. But it's nice. <laughs> it's nice to have in sand. But yeah, when you're in the mountains, you're never going to make use of it. Yeah. Yeah, we. I think we averaged between t- both trail trips that we took 20 miles an hour at the most. I was in the lead. I think I averaged a lot. You actually, <laughs> <laughs> you were in front. We were all eating dust the rest of the trip. So that, that's one downfall I see. Like if I tried to go across country or do another big adventure like that, um, I'd have to roll on a stock X3, uh, like don't even flash it or nothing. But seeing how all the X3s are turboed, it's definitely going to hurt the mileage. The XP 1000 got the best mileage out of all three machines uh, because the general's geared a little bit lower. And of course, the turbo's just whatever. And the furthest mileage we went, 188 miles on a tank. Wow. Yeah. Now, of course, we dumped four gallons into it and that, you know, made it the rest of the way. But the general and the 1000 went 188 miles on a tank. The general had half a gallon left in it. And the uh, XP-1000 had like nine-tenths of a gallon left in it. Um, and that's, you know, being very, very cautious of, you know, nice gas down the hills and then coasting up the hills with, you know, letting the off. You know, really trying to get the most out of your, your gas mileage. When I let 404 Barbie lead, you know, we got down to a stop sign. I was like, you need to calm down. She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I was like, you're not. I was like, but I'm not catching you on the uphills. I was like, you hit a hill before me. I should catch you before you get to the top because I'm coasting into it. You know, you've already lost your speed. And she had no clue. And I was like, yeah, you you have to do that. I was like, because we're four hours from gas. And I was like, we've only got like eight gallons left. So, you know, we need to be conservative. And it's things that, those are things people never even think about. You wouldn't think about it until probably like day four when you ran out of gas and be like, oh, shit. Yeah, we were at about 120 miles on the furthest fuel point. I found out that I didn't need it. You know, I didn't I didn't need to pack extra gas. I, I'll never do that. I'm always going to have extra gas. You never know if you want to do an offshoot exploring or something like that. But I was so impressed with the X3's fuel consumption. I mean, on my YXZ, my YXZ, depending on if I wasn't loaded out heavy, if I was loaded pretty light, that thing would go about 160. It was pretty impressive, but it was, I mean, from a dynamic ride standpoint, there's just no comparison between that car. We did a Baja Mexico trip this past year, and that was basically the turning point for um, trying to Can-Ams out. So uh, we worked with Can-Am and Casey Curry, and he had a four-seater and a two-seater, and they let us use them. And they're basically doing a trip from um, uh, Ensenada all the way to Cabo, uh, one way, and then fly back. So it was kind of organized through Travis and some other guys using trophy light trucks, which are kind of Ford Ranger size trophy trucks with Ecotech motors in them. And we know the people that run that series and they own trucks. So he set them a price, and this is what it would cost y'all to use these trucks for this time frame and all that kind of stuff. They provided mechanics, chase cheap, uh, chase trucks, parts, whatever, and all fine. And then we got the two Can-Ams, and I kind of arranged that with Can-Am and uh, Casey Curry's guys. And we took off, and now I could get – I could easily get 120 miles out of a tank of fuel on a Can-Am, you know, very much like you said. If Travis was driving, he couldn't make it 100. Now, I was driving in eco mode the whole time, 
and just cruising nice and easy where he's over there diving off the road, you know, hitting side trails, sliding, doing donuts and all kind of stuff and splashing through puddles. I pulled him out three different times to where he was out of gas and we had to hook a strap and I'd just cruise him in until he gets to the chase trucks. So yeah, I know about the mileage part of it. That's, that's funny. That's we're, we're very much on the same page and we had performance keys in ours, but I could get better mileage than he could every day of the week. Now, I don't know if a four seater would do the same being how it is a little heavier and we were running 33 inch tires. So that's a little more load until you get to a certain mile per hour, about 40. It carries it really nice. 